Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to lecture 81. So, last time we have done, uh, we have looked into what will be the condition for minimum eccentricity and uh, for going from inner to outer orbit or outer to the inner orbit. Now, uh, in this lecture, we uh, start with the generalized trajectory transfer equation derivation. And uh, so, we have the trajectory transfer, we can choose from two point of view that we want to have a optimal time or a time is given, we have to manage the things going from one orbit to another orbit okay. or we want to minimize the energy. Mostly you will see that most of the time because we have to run our satellite for a longer time. So, it is a minimum energy requirement most of the time that will be the truth. Okay. So, you cannot burn your propellant arbitrarily. Okay. If you do that, then the satellite life is lost. So, if one satellite mission it costs around 300, 400 crore rupee. So, it has to last for longer time, 10 years, 15 years, whatever. So, that is the service period of the satellite. And if the propellant is burnt earlier, then that satellite becomes unusable. Okay. So, all the control system on board for uh, maneuvering the satellite orientation, that should run for 15 years and also the orbit correction, correction system, which is based on the propulsion system that should also run for 15 years. So, this is the situation. Okay. So, let us discuss about the generalized coplanar transfer. And already we have looked into that uh, this delta v, this is directly related to your v ln m 1 y m 2 means the propellant mass bond. So, minimum energy required means you want to minimize the use of the propellant. I, I do not want to use a large amount of propellant burnt at any time. Okay. So, when this is going to happen, this we can explore. So, before going into the actual thing, we can have a look of uh, the um, fact that uh, when your energy spent will be the minimum. So, if, uh, let us look at the point A, this is the trajectory and V A is the velocity initially and you want to go into another trajectory. So, V B is the velocity and this is delta V B, delta V. So, the total energy required at that point because the r you are not changing the radius vector this may be the point of attraction ok the center of force. So, this you are not changing. So, the energy this will basically be defined as 1 by v b square minus 1 by 2 v a square this is the change in energy. So, for a given mass bond which is dependent on this delta v. Okay. So, what it implies that a, for a given delta v once a proper amount of mass is burned, so you get some amount of impulse delta v okay. and this delta v is going to manifest here 1 by 2 v a plus v a plus uh, delta v square means we have to take the dot product V a plus delta V So, the question arises when this change in energy will be maximum. So, if we expand this part, so we can see that this will be V a square plus 2 times V a dot delta V plus delta V square 
minus v a square this this drops out 1 by 2 times 2 you can write like this v a times delta v times cos this let us say this angle is some uh, let us say this angle is alpha. Okay. So, we can write v a times delta v cos alpha plus delta v a square divided by 2 delta v can be taken outside. So, this is the energy change. So, for a given mass of propellant bond your delta v also get fixed and then cos alpha is missing here. V a cos alpha. So, two things you can observe from this place if cos alpha is equal to 1 means alpha equal to 0. So, delta E will be del V a plus delta V divided by 2 times delta V. So, for a given delta V and given V a this delta E gets ma maximized means the change in energy is maximum. So, you are getting the maximum amount of possible energy change in the energy of the orbit total energy of the orbit because here the potential energy is not changing while you are providing impulse at a particular point. So, the r vector the radius is not changing and therefore, the potential energy remains unaltered only the kinetic energy gets affected. So, one observation is that for alpha equal to 0 delta E is going to be maximum this is first observation and the second observation what we can have that if for a given delta v delta e will be maximum when v a is maximum. So, for a given delta v delta e will be maximum for largest v a. So, this implies that in the orbit say if you apply here this is your perigee position and velocity here this is v a and if you apply impulse delta v here in this direction in the same direction delta v. So, the change in energy will be maximum ok while you do the opposite part here in this place here this is your v v point and you are providing delta v the impulse. Okay. So, according to this because v v is less here in this place and therefore, for the same impulse delta v the change in energy will be less as it is evident from this equation. Okay, so, this should be what we have worked out here it should be kept in mind okay, when this is going to be maximum. Okay, so, we explore the thing uh, for the transfer from first orbit to the inner orbit to the outer orbit. this is the inner orbit and from point p we have to go into the outer orbit uh, we can name this as a rather than p this is as b so the, this is the orbit uh, 
and this is a generalized transfer not the tangential one ok. So, at this point we write here as V i c the, uh, this is r i and this will indicate as r f and the velocity here tangent to the transfer orbit v, which we write as V i e in the elliptic orbit or the transfer orbit V i c and V i e. Similarly, at this point velocity in the circular orbit this will be V b c and uh, tangent to this the transfer orbit this will be V b e. So, the initial velocity V i c is the initial velocity in the circular orbit and V i e in the circular inner orbit. V i e is the initial velocity in the elliptic or the transfer orbit slash transfer orbit. in the inner orbit. Similarly, we are defining V f b uh, we have written V b c uh, ok. For the inner we have used the word i. So, I will change it to rather than writing here b I will use here f. So, accordingly we will define this as v circular final velocity or the velocity in the final orbit final circular orbit. This process is applicable to a elliptic orbit also. elliptic slash transfer orbit. Okay, so, uh, these are some of the nomenclature we are going to use and V i c will be equal to V by r i under root the velocity in the circular orbit. With all this nomenclature, and VFC will be mu by RF under root. This we have already done. So, this is initial, this is final. Moreover, we define V cap equal to V divided by VIC. So, using this nomenclature, we will have V i c equal to V cap i c equal to V i c divided by is equal to 1 and V f c cap equal to V f c divided by V i c. So, from here this is mu by r f under root divided by mu by r i under root and then this becomes r i by r f under root and we are r f by r i we are writing as n. So, with this uh, nomenclature given to us we are ready to uh, work out the energy required. So, what we are interested in finding out the impulse delta V a and delta V b this will be equal to delta V.
So, at the initial point delta v i can be written as v i e minus v i c in the vector notation and therefore, delta v i a square this can be written as v i a square plus v i c a square. You can take the dot product with the self and then you can write it to v i e times v i c and the angle between them which we are defining as cos alpha i. This is v i e and this is v i c the, these are the two vectors this is alpha i this is the change here delta v. Similarly, delta v f square this will be v i this is i e v i c minus v i e v f e v f e delta v we first write in the vector terms and thereafter we will convert it delta v f square v i c a square plus v f e a square minus we have to distinguish between c and e okay. to be little careful in writing this this is the velocity at the final point we have to write everything properly this is v f c and here this is v f e both are in the final orbit not in the initial and therefore, this quantity we have delta v f and this is we are writing as alpha f. So, following that notation here is also f all these are f f e times cos alpha f. So, if in these two points what are known to us? V f c is known to us because you know the radius of the initial and the final orbit these are circular orbits and therefore, the velocity is known from that. Okay. This alpha f and alpha i these are not known to us, okay. these are unknown. So, this we need to work out and what about the velocity in the elliptic orbit. For this we can use this formula minus mu by 2 a equal to v a square divided by 2 minus mu by r. So, if we utilize this, so v a square divided by 2, this will be equal to mu y r minus mu y 2 a or v a square equal to 2 mu y r minus mu y a. So, at the initial position r is known and if a is known, then our v gets decided. Okay, so, these are the issues that we are going to explore. So, in which orbit you are going to send it that will decide what will be the value of A. one by a. So, we write it like this a equal to l times 1 minus uh, l equal to a times 1 minus c a square. So, we use this equation l y 1 minus c a square. So, we will assume here this uh, L is 
known and E is known. So, you, you should know in which orbit you are going to send. So, if you know that, so everything is then decided. And therefore, following this notation, V i e square, this can be written as 2 by mu times 2 by r i r i can be taken outside. So, this is mu by r i times 2 minus mu by r i c uh, r i is nothing but v i c square. So, this is 2 minus 1 minus v e square divided by L cap, where L cap is being defined as, as we have used the notation earlier L by R i. Following the same notation, we can see that V f e square, this will be mu by mu times 2 by R f minus 1 minus e square divided by L. Or uh, it would be better to write it in a way because we are going to express it in terms of V i c. So, rather than expressing in terms of R f taking the R f here outside, let us say that I take here R i. Okay. So, this quantity then can be written as R f by R i and uh, this quantity here this can be written as L by R i you will see the benefit of using this and therefore, V f e square this gets reduced to V i c a square times 2 divided by R f by R i is n. So, 1 minus e a square divided by L cap. So, this will term as equation 1, this as the equation 2 and this we will write as equation 3 and this as equation 4. So, we can utilize this information to rewrite the equation. Okay, so, uh, now we have to rearrange the whole thing in a proper way and uh, for that what we require also we have to look into this part and that V f c cap we have written as in the final circular orbit this is V f circular by V i circular okay, and from there we have got this as 1 by n under root. So, keeping in mind all this information, we have to rewrite the whole thing. Now, alpha we have to decide what will be the, how we are going to work out uh, this angle alpha, which is appearing here. Alpha is appearing here, alpha f is appearing here. So, this we need to work out before we can do any other thing. So, uh, rather than writing this alpha, let us uh, use this as uh, phi. Instead of writing alpha, I will use this as phi. So, if I do this, so everywhere I will change it to phi. The reason for this will be obvious as I proceed further because I do not want to confuse you. This is phi i phi f. So, only thing here I have changed 
year changed and uh, anywhere else till now we have not used. Okay. So, say this is the trajectory this is the trajectory okay. and this is the r vector to the point and this is the center of force. Okay. It may be focus or whatever. So, in this direction you have v theta and in this direction you have v r which you have written as r dot and this part is r times theta dot and velocity is tangential here in this direction. And this angle we write as phi angle. So, phi is here the flight path angle or uh, maybe we can write in terms of uh, this is ok let us keep it phi, phi is the flight path angle we have used earlier. So, that uh, this is why I changed earlier from alpha to this flight path angle. So, immediately from this place we can see that tan phi this will be equal to r dot divided by r times theta dot and this is nothing but dr by dt times 1 by r times g theta dt we can write like this and this is dr by d theta 1 by r tan phi is given by 1 by r times dr by d theta. Where theta is here the true anomaly. Okay. So, minus L by R square dr by d theta that gives us minus E sin theta okay. and tan phi we have already written on the previous page tan phi equal to 1 by R times dr by d theta. So, we need to insert dr by d theta from this place. So, dr by d theta this equal to r square divided by l e sin theta. Okay, and we require here one by r. So, 1 by r if we keep it here we will make it in the next step. So, we will write it as 1 by r dr by d theta this equal to r times dr by l or e sin theta divided by l by r. So, this quantity then gets reduced to e sin theta divided by l by r. Therefore, tan phi i the flight path angle at the initial point this can be written as E sin theta i transfer orbit is the same only thing the i tag or the f tag is appearing E sin theta i divided by L cap similarly tan phi f this will be E sin theta f divided by L by R f. So, according to the notation we are following okay. So, this we need to manipulate little bit we can write it as L by R i R i by R f theta f divided by L by R i is L cap 
and r i by r f is 1 by n r f by r i we have written as n. So, this is 1 by n. So, n times e sin theta f divided by L cap. Thus, we have tan phi i e sin theta i divided by L cap and tan uh, phi f e sin theta f multiplied by n times L cap. This is 5 and this is 6. So, now check from this point that from this orbit we have to uh, the velocity vector is directed here. If it is some uh, other orbit elliptical orbit this also at that time helps and then you are thrusting it into a into another orbit. So, th this directly gives you now, this is tangential to this point and in the circular orbit this is normal this is 90 degree. So, this constitutes your v theta direction and this is v in the elliptic orbit and this is corresponding r dot. In the case of circular orbit r dot is 0, but not for the elliptic orbit. So, for in the transfer orbit r dot is positive initially uh, positive or negative depending where it is lying. Okay. And uh, you can see then this is your flight path angle phi. This is the reason I have changed it to uh, from alpha to phi. So, it is easy, but if it is an elliptical orbit the situation is then different. So, at that time say here this is the point or either we take another point. Here this is in the circular or elliptical orbit this is v i okay. and corresponding then I will rather define alpha i or say the phi i and then it has to be sent into some another elliptic orbit say if you have to transfer here in this orbit another orbit where this is the v i v in the another elliptic orbit you are doing or v t we can tag it as v t. Okay. So, for that orbit uh, let me change it little bit. Okay, so, what we will do that will not distort the orbit that much, we will assume that this rotates by certain amount, you are rotating the orbit by certain amount. So, from this place it is passing through this point and going like this, orbit has changed like this something not very good figure, but it is ok. So, here in this case your velocity then you can see that this is the radius vector already we have drawn okay. this is 90 degree for the pink orbit we will draw by another per this is v in the transfer orbit this is tangential to the pink orbit okay. and radius vector will be along the same direction. So, the perpendicular direction here this uh, v theta direction remains same. So, this is your phi in the transfer orbit. Okay. So, you can see that between the v i and v f this is your angle which now we can define as alpha. So, alpha i equal to phi t minus phi i. Here in this case uh, in the circular orbit v theta and uh, v uh, as you can see from this place the velocity itself lies in the v theta direction. So, here v circular is nothing but equal to v theta 
and therefore, this is here it was easy, but if the if this is a elliptic case. So, you have to take uh, this uh, properly into account. Okay. So, then instead of writing in on the previous page where we have defined in terms of cos phi, I will tend to keep it as cos alpha i and cos alpha f and then alpha i and alpha f will be defined by alpha i is defined like this and similarly alpha f will be defined. Okay. So, you can see the difference and this we have to keep into account while working. Okay, so, we will stop here and uh, do your rest in the next lecture. Thank you very much.